Hi, this is Judy from Trinity Tree, and today I'm going to show you how to make a face mask for kids. Now, this face mask was made for my great nephews, and they're anywhere from age three to seven, and it fit okay. Not a perfect fit, but if they had been here, I would have adjusted the elastic around the ears a little bit more. So that just gives you an idea. Uh, this one was made with a sewing machine, but of course, I know everybody doesn't have a sewing machine, and I did a video showing how to make an adult face mask and to hand sew it, and it's had so many views, so I know there's a need out there uh, to show how to make a hand sewn mask. So today, I'm going to show you how to make this child size mask, but I'm going to hand sew it instead of using the sewing machine. So all you're going to need are a needle and thread, pins, two pieces of cloth, and the cloth is seven inches by five inches and two pieces of about an eighth inch elastic and they are six inches. Now, you can adjust the elastic depending on your child's face. So it's just kind of a trial and error process. And by no means, this is not the only way to make a face mask, but I'm gonna show you how to hand sew uh, one just like I did on the machine. So the first thing you're gonna do is take your two pieces of cloth and you're gonna take a right side and a wrong side and put it together. That way, when you turn it, your face mask will have a right and a wrong side. Of course, you get a pack of needles at Walmart and I like to use uh, kind of the mid middle size length and I, I didn't have any orange thread, so I'm using red and I like to thread my needle with just a single thread. Now, if I'm sewing on buttons, I'll use a double thread, but for this, I'm gonna use a single thread, and I also use a thimble on my finger to help push the needle through, and I have some pins. So, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna pin it together, uh, and don't worry about the pin holes. You wanna wash your fabric before you start if you want to. I didn't, but I did press it. If it's very wrinkled or has any folds in it, it's helpful to press it. You do wanna use 100% cotton. You can use, you don't have to go buy a yard of fabric to make a mask. You can find an old cloth shirt. T-shirt material is a little harder to sew to me. So I've tried that and a cloth just works better. But don't worry about making pinholes in it because wash it before you wear it. And then when they take it off, wash it again. Now, this face mask is not gonna protect from viruses. They're too microscopic in size. They're gonna you know, go through the holes of a woven fabric, but this will help reduce moisture coming from your child's mouth when they sneeze, cough, or speak. And that'll help reduce germs. Okay, so we're gonna pin the edges together just to put a pin in a couple of places. You may not even need the pin, but this way it'll keep your fabric straight. Just in a couple of places. And I'm gonna start stitching along the seven inch side. Now, I'm gonna need to leave an opening. We're gonna need to leave about an inch and a half opening uh, to be able to turn it. So I'm gonna start stitching. And let me go ahead and turn it on the wrong side so I can see my stitching better. So I'm gonna start about midway and I'm gonna stitch about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I'm just gonna take small stitches and I can pull those pins out as I go. It's hard for me to keep my hands out of the video, but just take very small stitches. Let me make a few more, then I can show you close up. And did I say I'm stitching about a fourth of an inch away from the edge? Okay. <clears throat> now, 
Before I get to this corner, I'm gonna take my elastic and slip it in the mask. So it's laying in the corner just like that. Okay? So I'm just gonna kinda hold that in place with my finger and I'm gonna stitch down to that corner. And of course you can tell it when you get to the elastic, it'll be harder to get your needle through. And I'm gonna kinda reinforce that stitching there by kinda back stitching a time or two cause I wanna make sure that I get my elastic caught very good. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna start down the five inch side, making the same kind of stitch. Just small, straight stitches. It's kind of awkward, but I'm trying to hold that up where you can see it. Maybe I should have the camera on the other side. Hang on, let me fix that. Okay, maybe that'll help a little bit. Maybe I can keep my hands out of the way a little more. But now we're just stitching down that five inch side. And I'm gonna stitch right down to the corner I'm not gonna go all the way to the corner. I'm gonna stop within, you know, a little greater than a quarter of an inch because we're gonna take that, take the other end of our elastic and it's gonna go in that corner right there, okay? Do what? Let me go ahead and just put a pin in that. You wanna make sure, you know, when you're stitching that you don't have your elastic twisted. get to the corner you just want to make sure that you catch your elastic good and take that pin out it's just holding that elastic in place and reinforce this reinforce the stitching over the elastic I'm just stitching in place <clears throat> two or three times Then we're gonna turn and we're gonna start down the seven inch side.
Okay, now before we get to that corner, we're gonna take our other piece of elastic. And we're gonna slip it in. And just get that in where it fits in that corner. Hold it in place with your thumb, and then we're going to stitch down there to it and secure it. This is where your thimble comes in handy. It helps push that needle through the elastic because it's a little, it's a little harder than sewing through the cloth. Going to reinforce that a little bit more. It didn't feel like it was very secure. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to turn and go down the five inch side. Okay, before we get to the corner, we're going to find the other end of our elastic. And we'll put it in that corner. And we're going to stitch over it. Just hold it in place. Feel it when you soak through the elastic. And just secure that well. So stitch over that a couple of times. Okay, and then we're going to turn and we're going to come down the long side. And this is our starting point. So we're going to stop about an inch and a half away from that so that we'll have an area where we can turn the face mask. Okay, now I'm gonna back stitch that right there. I wanna secure that pretty good because we'll have to turn it very gently. Okay, so now we've stitched all the way around, but we have our about an inch and a half opening. So we're gonna turn the face mask. We're gonna turn it very gently. Uh, have to do it a little bit easier than we do if we're uh, sewing on a sewing machine because you don't wanna pull your stitches out. But just turn that right side out.
just pulls your corners out kind of gently. Now there's our opening, and we're gonna make sure that we have those edges tucked in, and we're gonna top stitch uh, in a little bit, uh, and that will secure that opening. We don't have to secure it right now. We're gonna do that with our top stitching when we go all the way around the mask. The first, the next thing I'm gonna do right now is press the mask and we'll just make working with it easier. I'll be right back. Okay, and you can see my face mask is not perfectly rectangular. That's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the next thing we're gonna do is make our tuck. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna do this size of a mask. I'm just gonna put one tuck. You can put two if you want to, but I'm just gonna do one. So you're just gonna fold the fabric down, just fold it over on itself. You call it a tuck or a pleat, whatever. And I'm gonna pin that in place. Ooh, that's not a good pin. And pin it in place on the other side. You do, if you like, if you fold down the material, if you fold it down from the top this way, you do wanna fold it the same way on the other side. You don't wanna fold it up from the bottom. You want your tucks going in the same direction. Okay, now I have to re-thread my needle and get more thread. Okay, so I'm gonna stitch uh, about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I'm using a single thread. And to hide my knot, I'm gonna go up under that tuck and pull my needle through and my knot pull through. That happens sometimes, so I need to make a bigger knot. Just hang on. Try that again. So I'm gonna go under the tuck. That's just to hide the end of the thread. And then I'm gonna stitch about a quarter of an inch or a little less than a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And when I'm sewing through the tuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a couple of extra stitches just to kind of reinforce that. And of course, this is the thickest part of the mask. So this is where, again, where the thimble comes in handy. It's a little bit harder to push your needle all the way through that material because you've got it folded several times there. You want to make sure that you get all of your material caught. And we're going to go over it more than one time, so there'll be an extra time to reinforce it. So we're going to come to the corner. And when we get to the corner and we can feel that we're stitching through the elastic, we're going to reinforce that a couple of times too. So just stay right there when you know you're sewing in the elastic area and put a couple of extra stitches in there. You want that elastic to hold. You don't want it to pull out. So it won't hurt to have extra stitches. Okay, and then we're gonna turn. I like to call this the top side of the mask and the area with the opening, the bottom, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna stitch across the top of the mask just small straight stitches. You'll find this area is a little easier to stitch. I'm gonna stitch all the way down to that corner.
And when you get to that corner and you feel that elastic again, just reinforce that stitching with three or four, three or four stitches there. And then we're going to turn and we're going to come and come down the short side. And when you get to that top part, that's going to be real thick. It's a little harder to sew through that. But once we sew through it from this side, we're gonna flip it over and make sure that we got it caught good from the other side too. If you have to, you can go all the way through and just bring it back and forth like sewing on a button. That way you can be assured that you've gone through all the thicknesses of the cloth. It's just not not hardly as neat, but you know, sometimes you just have to do that to make sure that you've gotten it all the way through. And when I get to the edge of the tuck, I'm just gonna reinforce that with a couple of stitches just to make sure I've got it caught good. Then we're gonna sew on to the corner. to that corner, reinforce that area with the elastic. Okay, and now we're gonna turn and come across the bottom. And this is where our opening is. So we're gonna just continue right on with that quarter of an inch away from the edge, and that's gonna catch that opening and close it. Oops, I pull my thread out. That's what happens sometimes. Pull the thread out of my needle. You just want to make sure that you've got the ends of your fabric tucked in and that you catch it. Okay, we're back to the corner again. Gonna feel that stitch till you feel that elastic. Reinforce it with a few stitches. Okay, and turn, and there, 
our tuck is where we started, so we're going to stitch right back to there. back to another thread again. So I'm going to reinforce that tuck with a couple of extra stitches. And I'm going to go all the way through it from top down, pull it out from the bottom just to make sure I have it caught good. Just kind of a back and forth stitch, just like you were sewing on a button. And I pull my thread out again. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here and re-thread uh, my needle. I'll need to reinforce this because I ended off without reinforcement there. But you can see on the back side, it looks like we've caught all of our tucks pretty good. So I'm gonna put more thread in my needle and I'm gonna go all the way around the mask again at that quarter inch area, okay? I'm gonna start right there at that fold again, cause that's just a really good place to hide my knot. So I'm gonna go under that fold and that's where I'm gonna start. I'm kinda going in the opposite direction this time, but that doesn't matter. And if you want to, you can kinda do like an overcast stitch on that fold just make it look a little neater, maybe. Just extra reinforcement, but that's just an overcast stitch. Just kind of pulling that kind of snug. You want to keep your stitches, you know, snug, but not to the point that it's gathering your material. But that's that will just kind of reinforce those tucks right there. Okay. So then I'm gonna get back out there to my quarter inch space area. Okay, now I'm just gonna go around the mask again with the quarter inch. Oh, about a quarter of an inch. I may be a little less than that, but um, around that edge one more time.
sorry. Okay, now to make my, to hide my last stitch, I'm gonna go under that tuck again. And snip my thread from under there. Okay. So now we've gone all the way around the mask twice. And kind of give your elastic pieces a tug. Make sure they feel okay. All right. Okay, now this may be overkill, but since it's hand stitched, I'm gonna go around that outside edge one more time. I'm gonna stitch between the edge and my quarter inch stitch. So I'm gonna start at my fold again and go insert my needle in the fold to hide my end of my thread and then I'm going to stitch right on that outer edge and go all the way around the mask on that edge. Of course my thread gets knotted up. There we go. So there's our face mask, we're all finished. 
Uh, it's pretty secure. And just remember, you know, you can adjust the length of the uh, elastic if you need to. And don't forget that, you know, this is not going to protect from viruses, but it may help reduce some spread of germs when your child coughs, sneezes, or talks. Uh, keep <laughs> washing your hands and keep your hands off your face. And y'all stay safe. Thanks for watching. I know this is not the sort of uh, tutorial that Trendy Tree usually does, but uh, I've been making these for my great nephews. And if you check out the blog post, it shows you how it fits on their face. So they're like three, five, and seven years old, and this has worked pretty good for them. So I hope it'll work for you. Thank you. Bye-bye.